All right, Kristen B. Let's do this. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tinzo. Hi, y'all. Uh, um, I never know if this is actually working, but can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, can you hear me? I can. Are you? Do you just waking up? No. Do I have my my just waking up voice? You've got a morning sexy waking up voice. Like yeah. Like thank you for calling Chrissy B's hotline. How can I service you today? <laughs> you know, somebody called me late last night, and I answered the phone. It, you know, I hadn't used my voice a, a lot because I I had been in bed and it was kind of late. And he was like, he was like, did I wake you? And I was like, no, but I didn't. I don't have you programmed in, so I was using my sleepy voice in case. You know, it was someone uh, I really you didn't want to talk to, then I could say yes. So. You faked sleepy voiced it? I, I did. I did. You know, I will tell bit. you, unfor as a fan, um, that may actually be not behoove you. That may may have turned this person on. So whoever you are, you're lucky you got the fake sleepy voice. Listen, <laughs> do you know do you know how much I love you that I get to just call? I, you, oh, by the way, for the haters out there, so the last one I did was with Shannon, right? Yes, and these, I think so, yeah. These are so spontaneous and random. Actually, I should check to make sure people can hear us. Um, can you hear okay? Let me see. Um, so I did the show with Shannon, and these are spontaneous and random. And then this was just some random bar banter, knucklehead peoples. And they're like, there's no way. Um, oh, I guess we can hear because Mike Andrews can see. Okay, and they're here. Um they literally were going on and on and on about how there's no way it's it's like spont oh i'm getting echo oh that's me i just i'm finding you on my ipad i turned it off I'm, i can see you okay go ahead Sorry. okay yeah don't don't put the audio on it'll overlap me I plus we're in the future people are seeing literally like a little bit behind us right well i had to, it just came on and i it was i had to turn okay it. okay you're muted but i'm watching you all right well listen See, I'm in the few. I'm in the. Wait, can you see it now? Or oh, whatever. Listen, anyways, listen, Christy B. Someone was hating on me, and they were like, "There's no way that it's it. Like, you must be reading a script, or this, this, and that." And like, the people really don't know that you're calling. So, for the haters out there, I literally called Christy B. For a fact, two seconds before the show started, and I said, "Hey, do you want to do a little show?" She said, "Sure, call me right back." She did give me a a, a prerequisite, and that was it can't go long. But you watch; it'll be her fault if we go longer than she wants to. But anyways, I miss you and I love you. Let's take it from the top. How's life report card? Um, I really, truly have no complaints. Like, it, 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 I'd say straight A's, and that's uh. That's not common for me. I'm not a straight A student, but I I have no complaints. I'm I am uh, I am happy, happy, happy. So, moving on, staying busy. This is kind of a um, relaxed week for me. I have a few things going on. I actually need to call you about some business, but that we won't do that now. But um, this is kind of a slow week for me. And then next week I'm off to um, Tennessee. It'll be my fourth month in a row uh running comedy shows out to tennessee so okay. that is super exciting and um i have a really great comedian i've never seen before excuse me hang on i do have my morning voice on to hear that <laughs> so um she's uh andrew deagley has been on um netflix um She's been touring around. She's got a little tour group with uh, Feral Hogs group. And I had her booked back. Uh, we had to cancel because of the quarantine. But she's coming back. So she's going to be in Tennessee. Okay. And then uh, the following week, I'll be back home. We'll be at uh, Breakaway Thanksgiving week. And then the week after Thanksgiving, Hammock Wine and Cheese. Okay. This is a lot of good news. A lot of good stuff going on. You know, it's been a minute, and you know, for the sake of not only um, this is the realness, because I don't care whether we're live or not, I don't need the exacts, but how's this crush working out here? Which, what? The, the last time we talked, we don't say uh, names, Chrissy, don't be afraid, no. I'm not going to blow up, like, and Billy Bob came over yesterday, I don't care about who it is, we just know that we had a crush, and that was a big deal, can I, can, that's... <sighs> What? We're going, we're going straight. For sure, hundred percent. This okay. is what I would so, be. Yes. Um, so, so that was honestly like my first crush 
in a long time. You okay. know? So it was a big deal for me to just actually meet someone that I actually, you know, kind of wanted to see again. So, but that's over. <gasps> <laughs> it's that's that. But I have had a crush since that. So I, oh, I think oh, oh. personally, in my personal life, I've been single for years, like right. several, several years. Yes. And, um, you know, I'm content with, with being single. I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like anything's missing. I'm, I'm super busy. I've got great friends. I've got a great family. There's like, I'm, I'm not, I was with some girlfriends uh, this past weekend and I don't have I don't have very many friends that are in a happy, healthy relationship, like with a boyfriend. Like mm-hmm, I have married mm-hmm. friends that have good marriages, but I don't have a lot of friends that are like, my boyfriend's the greatest. I, right. So I'm, I've am i been holding back because I just don't, I don't know. I just don't think it's in the cards for me at this time, which is fine. But also, um, you know, it's just I, don't, I think it's just kind of starting to happen for me where I'm meeting people where I'm like, okay, I'd like to see this person again and see if there's a possibility that I would like to see them again after that. And it's it's kind of rare that that happens. But there is one yes. um, that, you know, I, I would like to see again, and we'll, we'll see. You know, well, listen, you know, the um, for the sake of the listeners at some point in the life that they ever, you know, when they listen to this, I didn't need the whole explanation of why you're keeping it chill. I know that part. So, listeners, that was for you. But I will say... It does excite me when you have someone in the crosshairs, Christy B. So this is exciting. So we had that's what that's what I'm saying. That's what people I think enjoy about these random no reason shows that I'm doing is that um, this is exactly how we would be talking, whether people are listening or not. And there's some you know there's like it's they just like that. Um, so this we had crush 1.0. We'll just and then we went to 2.0. So that was very short lived on the 1.0, which is good because you know what you're looking for. So now we got the 2.0. Um, I won't go where he is geographically. That will be for the after hours talk. I do want to, I won't, I don't want to names, but I would like to know. We don't have to say it now, but I, I'm very excited to find out where he is. Um, moving on. Oh, listen, I have got some things going on that I just want you to know. I love you and I value you because you're always there. You're very, I've told you this a bazillion times and we always do this, but I just want you to know that you're highly loved, extremely appreciated. And have been a major part of my recipe of just happiness. So thank you for being you, Christy B. Oh, thank you. You you make me happy every time I see that you call or um, a sweet little text. It just it, it makes me happy. You you're very important in in my life. Well, likewise. Are we um are we? Oh, you know what I was saying the other day. I was um I was like praying, and I always come up with like little stupid sayings. I'll tell you which one I came up with today. Oh, and by the way, guess what I'm having? I mean, you know what kind of day I'm having today? What my music choice was? What's that? DMX from back in the day day. Oh, nice. Yep. Nick Kimball's call me. I, I wonder if I can tap Nick Kimball in on this call. Is that possible? Hold um, and accept. I don't know. I'd love that. Thanks. I know. That would be hilarious. Let me see if I can get him. Hold on a second. Thank you for calling uh, Nicholas Kimball's answering service. How can I assist you? Nick, you're live, by the way. I'm live doing what? You're live um, on Facebook. Christy B and I were just having a little show, and I just brought you in on the show. So everything you say, hold your peace. You and Christy B are doing a little show? Yeah. We are. Hi, Nick. What's up? Did you ever get to do a little show to get the backyard built or what? Did you ever get your two by four laid straight? You talking? Oh me? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you were right. I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, you, you were right. Um, I'm just gonna buy some shelves and put them in my garage. It's just way easier. It's, it's way, way easier. Stuff. Way cheaper, right? I know. Like, I, it is. Know. It is. But I do want those shelves removed out of my she shed. But in the meantime, uh, they're gonna stay. And I'm just actually going this week. I'm getting the shelves. My garage is crazy. So. Yeah, if I'm gonna we could do we could do we could have a an, um you know a bitter ex wife party and we just go in there with some sledgehammers and like knock the shit out of them. I'm not a bitter ex wife though. Do you need do you know one that needs to do that? But I mean yes, more... I do. I'm I'm starting a club. I'm going to like I'm literally that's my whole thing. That or divorce party is my new business model. Like, are you angry? Well we're gonna go over to Christy Barrett's house and destroy her shed, her she shed. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. 
Awesome. Can you remind people to another alternative? We have a divorce party. And it's just like a divorce divorce road. Yeah. Well, I, I can relate. I can relate to all of those things, but I've already I've already gone through those, so I could like assist in those things. I'd I'd be more than happy to do that. Yeah, perfect. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be like carpet needs to be ripped up. I mean, somebody would love to rip up this carpet. You know, like that'd be great. Put them to work. Get yeah. a doctor to back it. You're like, hey, come over to my house and do the stuff. You just stuff that fit for you. Knock the shelves down. We could burn it. They could do the burn party where, you know, you've got to burn all the, you know, evidence of all the... Well, actually, people don't have a lot of that stuff anymore. It's all on your phone, pictures and stuff. So, uh, that wouldn't work. Yeah, that was thing. Like, that was thing. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, you got to have the, the burn party. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, try, try, try to get in the house together. Like you do have very good advice, by the way. I appreciated it. Um, can, while we're on the air right now, can I give, uh, I'm, I'm glad you did this, Kinza. I'm going to give Nick uh, credit for being the first person ever to give uh, me a chance in booking comedy. That's where it originally started. That was seven years ago. And you know I tell you that all the time, Nick, that uh, he said, let's do it. We did it once a week uh, on Wednesdays at Fuego Del Mar seven years ago. I had no idea what I was doing. He said, have fun, pretty much what, figure what it out. I said, I said, pay the talent well, make sure they're fed and happy, and if they ever have to, like, the potential of going to jail, make sure you step in and take the heat. That's what he knows my exact word. Right. Always, it was, always be failed, never be jail. Well, I'll tell you what, I have lived by that. I do pay my comedians well. I think I think there is one guy that owes $50, too. I'm not going to lie, it's been bothering me. He doesn't have, like, PayPal or, or um, you know, cash app, and I'm like, dude, we either have to meet up or I'm gonna have to mail you, I don't know, but I do, I know I own 50 bucks. But other than that, there's like no comedian can go through and say that I don't I don't pay well, and I don't make sure that they get paid. Oh, that's and, it, and that's that's it. Oh. Nick? Did we lose him? Yeah. No, no, he was me, I was just muting myself because I was laughing so hard. Oh. Hey, I'll piggy, uh, Listen, I'll piggyback on that. And for, you know, I was, uh, this is what I was going to say to you earlier, Chrissy, is like I was doing some some think tank and prayer tank. And I was like, you know what? There's always going to be order that rises out of the chaos. And I'm not talking about politically. I'm talking about my own life. So don't, I don't want to hear some shit people. But I will say this, Nicholas and I get to meet up every once in a while. And it's our own little private hangout sessions. And we link up and Nicholas has been pivotal to me just learning from somebody else that's done it before me. And I will say this in public on the show, Nick. I fucking love you, brother, and I can tell you that you've been you're you're an amazing person. And no matter who I run into when it comes to people like the Christies and those, everyone's got a little story about Nicholas, and you've always been there to help them and to give them a, a one up. So, but I also know that there's a lot of people I think that just love spewing. Like I said before, you picked before you called me, Nick. People have been talking shit about this little thing about like it being scripted or like it's not as genuine as it is or like I'm doing it for some ulterior motive. I literally just love talking with people and I figured I'd broadcast it. So anyways, I love you, Nicholas. I'm glad you tapped in. By the way, I'm going to talk with Chrissy for like 30, 45. That's what she gave me. And then I'm I'm going to pretty much be wrapping up and then try to hit the gym. But if you're around today, I'd love to see your butt. I think I'm going to – it's like 12 o'clock and it's bubble bath time. So I'm going to read a book. <laughs> Bubble bath time. Kinzo, I thought you were playing in the song. A song? What? What song? Oh, I thought that's how he got. I thought that's how he got chimed in because you had a uh, memory from the song that you've been playing this morning. No, no, I was just before Nick called. I always, I, mm. I like to listen to particular types of music depending on what mood it is. Today I'm having one of these like Iron Man days and I'm feeling pretty fierce and I could kick someone's ass, so I put DMX on. The original, like back in the day, day DMX. The what Will was? Break the ice? Flesh of my no, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood, bro. Uh, break the ice, such a better song. No, this is an album. Angel, the whole rad soundtrack. Are you kidding me? Um. Uh, I gotta go. Bubble bath is getting cold. All right, love you, bye. Bye, Nick. I wonder if we're gonna be able to stay. Can, are you there, Chrissy? I'm here. Hey, look at that technology working well. That's great. Um, That's great. Listen, so isn't he isn't he a nice I you know like I said I know he's got a bad rap sometimes. I know a lot of people are grumpy he's, pants well, at him. He's, well, he's got a nickname. We all know that. But I give him credit where credit is due. He's very intelligent. 
um, and he he he's not gonna, you know, uh, can I say bullshit you? Like, can right, I, you, know, you can say whatever you not, want. Like he's he's forward, he's straight up, he's honest, and he's smart. And sometimes right. it comes across as, you know, right. You know, you know what his nickname is, right? Um, is it something about having a large penis? Well, yes, but not having a large penis, just being one. I know, you know? I know, I know. But I, I don't say that. I, I love the guy because he is honest, straight up. He's going to tell you how it is. And yep. he does actually, true, have a huge heart. And he, he's honestly trying uh, to help people when he tells it how it is. He's not going to sugarcoat it. He's not going to tell you what you want to hear. He's going to tell you the truth. And he's a very, very smart uh, businessman. So I respect that about him. He's the kind of friend that tells you when your breath smells. Right. Well, yeah, I guess he would. And he would I give you, he but he'd give you, the, he'd give you gum, like he'd help you out. He'd be like, "Yo, bro, you need this." So, what is not, what I a night? He cares too much about someone's breath. I, I, I was a come on. I was right a, a now. Well, it when was, it comes to business, he is definitely right. He is definitely somebody to pay attention to. Whether whether people want to admit that or not, he's somebody you want to pay attention to. Boom so. shakalaka. Um, so let's do this too, as if we were really talking, which would be one of the points we would bring up is that, do you think that I'll see you in the near distant future? Do you want to make like a random, no reason plan? It's been a while, by the way, I got, um, I had my sister's wedding on Monday of last week. So it was a week ago that I misbehaved. Um, All right. it was a good time. And then I've tried to, um, Camille and I both had to do some recovery. So we recovered. So I'm feeling the fever. I got the fever to play a little bit, but today's obviously hurricane day. Have you noticed? What, what now? Today's hurricane day. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's looking. I've, you haven't been outside today. Have you? Hey, yeah. No, um, not really. <laughs> yeah. I have. Yeah. I'm just checking my daughter's here. Go ahead. Is she? All right. I love you. My daughter's going to get her um, senior portrait done today. Wow. Yeah, senior picture. What my, a moment. My baby, my oldest. Wow. Years old. I'm freaking out. All right, like, so here's what we do. Remember when we talk about stuff like this? And I tell you that your life has been very fascinating and growing for me because I get to have friends that are in all different segments of their life. You're in a segment where you have three beautiful children. Your oldest now is 18 going on 48, right? And yeah. what, do you, what do you feel like? What is it like right now for Christy Barrick to be where you are in 2020 with three beautiful kids who I've gotten to know slowly but surely, by the way. That's been Thank you, by the way, for letting me. Like, oh, get to know them, especially with your son with the soccer story. That meant a lot to me. But where where are you at? And I'm not looking for the negative connotation either. But, like, what's it? what would you say is, like, those people that are listening that may be in your position or soon to be where they have kids that are going to be – name your kids' ages literally. They're, what, 18? 18, 15, 13. Wow. So – Mom of three teens. I, I'm trying – I'm working on this joke about the fact that I'm a single mom with three teens or either – I'm single because I have three teens. I don't know. I don't know which one it is, but um, it's it's pretty incredible. I, I I I'm not gonna lie. My son towers over me, and um, you know he's doing the virtual school, which sucked. It completely sucked for right. a couple of weeks, but we we figured it out, and now I'm actually I'm in, I'm enjoying it. Although I mean I'm not teaching or anything. Have to kind of hover and make sure he's signed up, he's in his classes and stuff. It's it is a lot of work, but right. I love having him home. My youngest is actually home from school today because she was not feeling well this morning. She just had a really bad tummy ache, so I kept her home today. So we're all together as a family. So I was kind of having a lazy day. It is kind of gloomy outside. Um, I have I I'm not going to have no complaints when it comes to my. My littles, they're, they're growing up. They're, I, will, I will say this isn't a complaint, but I realized the other day that my kids wait till the very last minute to get things done. You know, they procrastinate. You know, they don't always pick up after themselves. They're, they're somewhat late a lot, and I realize they're getting on my nerves, and they're just like me. Right. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, I've created three little monsters. We're, we're a lot alike. 
if um, I were to, so. this is what I love about you is I love hearing about your life, good or bad. If I were to call you and say, tomorrow at noon, I'm going to have three teenagers. What would be some advice you could give me? Like, what am I, Ooh. what am I prepared for? Like, what am I, am I, am I stock? Am I, what am I doing? Like, I love these, I love the no reason nuances that I'm not dealing with, but I know people are, and they find other people's strengths and their weaknesses to help them. And that's why I do these shows, by the way, hater pants out there that wonder why I do them. I love hearing about like, what would, what would you say to me? Literally, I call it like Chrissy, I got three teenagers moving in with me tomorrow at noon. What am I doing? Oh, I, I, I couldn't give you the greatest advice just because I'm a mom, because I still have to figure it out myself every day because they're changing, I'm changing. You just, you have to be patient is what you have to mm. be. I am like my oldest now that she's 18. So we're, we're getting to that point where we're kind of friends, you know, we've gotten past that age where she thinks I don't know anything and she just wants to yell at me for no reason. We've done all that. It happens. Teenagers go through stuff, but you've got you, you've got to be patient. Like I'm a um, I'm a really easygoing person. So when that would happen, most of the time I'm just like you know I'm gonna I'm gonna take that bashing for a minute and then we'll let it calm down and then we're gonna talk about it. Uh, a lot of people are unable to do that. Maybe as a parent, they're going through stuff and now they're coming back and that's where you that's where it gets really ugly. Right. I, I've gone through it with all of my kids. It's been very, fortunately, very, very short-lived that we're in a moment where we're not getting along. Um, but there's no, I, I can't give any advice. I mean, I may be screwing them up yet. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's, still, there's, there's still time for that. I feel like I know that they're great kids. They've got a good head on their shoulders. They're all very sensitive. They're all very kind. They're um, they're smart. Um, they they haven't found, like, they don't know what they're going to do in life. That's and I'm okay. Not, but they're freaking kids. They don't, they're not supposed to know. So we're coming up with different plans on paths and setting goals and trying to help figure that out. But that, that's hard. Like, I, I still change my mind about what I'm doing in life. So we're just, I, I'm very, very easygoing. And I know in the end, everything's going to be okay. So uh -huh. that that's my main thing like when they're going through something when their heart is hurt or you know times are tough in school or whatever it is that they're going through it, everything is going to be okay it might not seem mm -hmm. like it right now but it is gonna be okay so we just say that um as often as as we can just write it out and love just love as much as you can i i realized the other day you know my son came and and laid down with me, and I had my arms around him, and I was like, holy cow, like his feet were hanging over the bed, and I was like, <laughs> I'm trying to hold my child here, and he's like a grown man, right. and it was just kind of, it was just weird, it was just awkward, but that, that love and affection, that touch, you know, it's just, um, I, I make sure they hug and kiss me, and, you know, and, and, and as much as I can, because, uh, they go through the stages also where they don't want to show affection. So right. it, it's hard. It's hard, but um, I wouldn't change a thing. And this is why, Christy, I call you. Because when I'm dealing with my own dragons and I need someone to say it's going to be okay without even saying it, that optimistic outlook when the weight of the world is on you I love that about you and I find it to be inspiring. I find it to be attractive. I find it to be intoxicating in a good way. And I want you to know something. I am not really, I have a lot of the kids in my life, if I say the younger demographic because of soccer, but I don't have any super habitual like kid intact, uh, intake. I don't hang out with a lot of kids because I don't have kids, but I will say this, your kids, and, I, and, and actually in all due respect as well, I would prefer not to normally if friends are like, hey, we're gonna come over and have friends, I'd, I'd rather not. No disrespect to any of them, I just, I don't have any, I don't have toys and I don't want to be with kids. So my point is this though, your kids, I've been able to meet them individually at separate times, one of which I think was one of your daughters, your son, they all have this um, old, and I call it old school because I think that the, the way of the old school raising was good where like respecting somebody that's older, even though I hate that I'm older than them, so to speak, I feel like I'm like, cool like them but I know I'm older weird guy remember I asked that to your kids I asked it to old kids like how old and weird am I but ultimately your kids 
have this really a respectful patient like that was very nice when they would introduce i don't know it was just a very good feel your kids in english my dearest darling as i'm trying to tell you are fantastic and i think it's obviously a byproduct of you and you know obviously their father figure as well helping them and, and showing them how to live and it's great because i'll tell you what you are i was talking to somebody else today um that is a single woman that is persevering and tackling the world solo and you know i'm a little bit old school and i do believe i hate to sound sexist but i do believe that it is a man's job to provide protect and kind of lead the way and kind of you know like be the 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 bumper of life take take the head-on situation in that way anything behind is okay but in this case i find it admirable and ultimately, I use the word attractive because I think it's a wonderful characteristic trait that you have is that you you just you just keep going. And, you know, Christy, I've known you now a hot minute. It hasn't been 10 minutes. It's, it's been a good hot minute. And you always exercise some really fun way of optimism, not like Gandhi style where it's boring and like, OK, keep a smile on your face. This lady's annoying me. You just you practice what you preach. And no matter what, you know, I've never once out of all the times we've hung out at your weakest and your best moments, you've never once just like said like, like F it all. And I admire that about you. And it's a wonderful thing. And I know everyone wants to do that. We all have that, right? And I don't know. I just love that. And I guarantee you, I speak for your kids. I guarantee you, they all can see that, taste that. And you've been so huge to like, to emulate that. To, to like, And as they're getting older... I don't know what kind of, you know, pillow talk you guys have with your kids and stuff like what, what you guys talk about, but I can get 99% positive if I was one of their buddies at the lunchroom today, if there is such thing as a lunchroom anymore, but you know my point, that they would say like, yo, my mom's strong, bro. Like my mom deals with some shit and she does it and she tackles it. And like when I grow up, I want to be like my mom. I could, cause I would say that if I was their friend. And by the way, the silver lining to it, life isn't about vanity, but you're damn sexy too, Christy. <laughs> Well, thank you. I tell you what, with my kids, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to that. They probably will say that one day, but I still don't think they quite see it right now. And, and without them, I, I, I wouldn't be like, I, I think I'm an incredible person. I'm not going to lie. I keep my own horn for Good. a minute, but that's because I'm a mom. If, if I didn't have them, you know, I don't, I don't know who I would be. You know, I, I honestly, I don't, I, I can't imagine. I don't, you know, it's been 18 years I've, I've been a mom before that I was a I was a, I was a little wild thing you know so my kids my kids saved me from you know from, from being just just out there doing crazy things fortunately so I don't think you realize everything your parents do until you get to an age a, a later age right so you don't really appreciate you take it for granted and some of them right now are in that stage of they just think I'm always going to be around. They just kind of take uh, right. everything that I do for granted because that's my job. Yep. But as they get older, they're going to be like, wow, my mom, I can't believe, like, how did she do that? Right. I don't know now. But, um, yeah, so that's that's what it is. You know what I was thinking about? Someone told me this. You make me feel so good. Yeah. Well, it's a Monday. It's dreary outside, and I'm like, I'm going to tackle this day, you know? I'm, I'm not kidding you just you. I um I've been having those that know me and you know a little bit about this and I'm not talking about it too publicly but I've been going through this major metamorphosis stage on levels I've never been through before and I'm going I was I was like praying and th doing my think tanking the other day and I thought to myself um I feel like I'm back in school and for those that know me and have known me before I had pubic hair like I hate school with all passion I just never did good in it I never it's because I didn't apply myself I'm not speaking against the 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 actual educational system. I just never applied myself. I hate it. Point is this: I'm in school right now, and I'm and I'm growing, and it's, it's it's not even willingly. Like I'm doing it because I have to. But today I woke up. In the last few days, I've been able to wake up, and I don't think there's any kid out there. And I think this is like gender irrelevant. I don't think there's no little boy or little girl out in the world at some point. If you close your eyes and remember being a little kid that you really truly believe that you had a superpower. Now, maybe boys thought they had superpowers and girls thought they were going to be princesses one day. I don't know. But I sincerely did feel, I'll never forget it, it was when I first started being able to ride my bike and I was able to like leave more than like the, 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 the circumference of a driveway. And I remember feeling like, oh my God, like I'm going to, this is, the world is like mine. Like I felt 
so powerful. I remember that I literally felt there were two things I was going to be able to do before I died. And I thought that I could even do them then. I just wasn't willing to put in the time is I could either breathe underwater or fly. And I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about both. <laughs> and as we grow up, the world slowly removes that fictitious joy, right? Because we, we they can't happen in the world. And it, I'm not blaming a person or a thing. It's an accumulation of this thing called life. And before you know it, we start to hear what every other man and woman's opinions and what facts are being facts. You have to do, your, this is broken, this needs to be fixed. And you, you, there are blueprints and layouts and rules of what you have to do to fix it or become better. And I hated that. And I, just in the last few days, by, by consequence of doing a tremendous amount of praying and fighting and tussling with myself, I got my superpowers back. I think I can fly again, and I, I'm feeling today was a fl today was like, I'm I'm getting that I'm getting that like, I don't know how to describe it. I speak in analogies and metaphors, obviously, but like I feel like I'm getting ready to run over to the cliff, and I'm fly. And whether I don't whether I fly or not, there's only one way. One thing has happened. It's either I'm going for it or I'm falling. I don't think I'm gonna fall. And this way, I don't even need an apparatus. By the way, I need no suit. I have no cape. I have nothing. I have no super spider yeah, web. It's just me. You got, your, you got your superpowers back. I think they're back, Christy. And I feel like I feel like all of us individually, no matter what we're going through, I got this whole new life outlook now. And if there's anyone listening to this now or a bazillion years from now that is going through anything physical, like injuries, ailments, I don't care what they are. If they're, whether they're on you or a family member or someone you love and they're dealing with something, whether it's chronic or this, listen to me. Help me help you and take authority over it. And I don't want to get all spiritual and weird, but look, there's a part of that. You can do that stuff too, because it works. Pray over it, take your authority, believe in that miracle. But listen, get supernatural with it. Take authority over it. And I'm not trying to make less of it and make light of it, because trust me, I know it now. For the first time in my life, I now know how to, like I'm learning how to have to deal with something that is out of my control physically. And I'm now I have this empathy and this love towards humans that if you're dealing with this, stay strong because it sucks like it absolutely sucks and it's so hard to keep that motivate it's easy to do it when things are great you know like, big deal your car breaks down no big deal you lose your job big deal all that stuff when it's physical holy bananas is it real so you know this well anytime i talk with you you know there's always that one little question i'll throw in there like how are you actually health wise right that's a big deal it's a very very big yeah. deal and it starts in the noggin which is crazy no matter what you read, no matter what scroll, no matter what medical thesis statement, they all will say to you that your positivity and your outlook on not only the injury or the ailment or the sickness, etc., will dictate. This is what I thought about the other day. I was praying. You ready? Yes. Your mental direction will dictate your health uh, direction. Does that make sense? Perfect. Absolutely. So I'm trying as hard as I can to stay mentally true north. To, to, and here's the thing too, though, I don't want to sound like this, like motivational speaker. And all of a sudden it's like, now, you know, now go jump off a mountain. You'll be good. Deal with it. That's the point is like, and it's not always easy. Cause it's right. hard. It's, it's so hard. hard to stay, you know, uh, mentally positive when you're going through something so hard. And listen, and now I'm learning more than ever. It's so important. And I, I don't like sometimes when people segregate other humans when it's about like stay around people that are positive pay, be, da, da, da. but there is validity behind that but check this out don't even alienate or ostracize yourself just say so positive that the people don't want to be around you and it works out you know there's that old italian saying when you pay when you lend somebody 20 bucks and you got rid of them for 20 bucks like that's kind of how i'm living my life if my and listen i'm not mr optimistic behind closed doors camille will be the first one to tell you that i'm fetal position the majority of my life like i'm i got a lot of my own woebegones that i am and i can be sincere and let that out and saying i am absolutely fetal majority of the time mentally when i am dealing with app, app, uh, opposition but when the time it's to execute and i have to put my knight in shining armor on you better bet your ass i'm coming at you strong like i'm coming at you a hundred percent. And I'm talking about myself. I'm not talking about like fighting somebody. I'm not Mr. Bruiser, but me, I have to tell myself every single day, part of my vernacular, but buck the fuck up. And that today I have to conquer it and beyond politics, beyond financial, beyond relationships, beyond any of it, do you, 
do yourself and do it well and everything else like you just said chrissy which by the way i hold on to you were talking about everything's going to be okay do you know that there's not there's like less than three people in my life that could actually say that and it and it means something and the only people that can say it are those that are that are that have like basically bore me and i will say to you that there's one thing that i would say to continue to do for your children which you already do never stop saying that to them because there's i don't believe anybody else when they say it to me but when it comes from a parental or it comes from somebody who's known you before you could walk it is the most reassuring most peaceful thing and if you don't have that if people have lost that as of because we're getting older and, and those around you have now gone to the next place do it for somebody else then because christy that optimistic outlook that you have when your kids are on their lowest low and their mommy says everything's going to be okay whether it's passing a school test whether it's passing the next relationship test or wherever it is don't stop doing that not that i think you ever would but don't ever if, if you've never been told that from your kids i can tell tr trust me being blessed with still having both my parents and going through my own metamorphosis right now, having them say everything's going to be okay, even though I know it's not right at this very moment, gives me this. Right. And, it, and it's, I'm not saying it's not going to be right. hard. And I'm not saying it's, it's not going to be a journey. But it is going to be okay. Right. Know, because, and and I, I do tell them that all the time. They, they, and they told me that, that too. They see me, they see me in some, you know, um, situations that I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull myself out of. Right. Too. They've seen they've seen me upset and um feeling like a failure at some point and you know they they can also let me know it's going to be okay my kids are very very sensitive so um that's kind of my superpower because i can see the in the future just a little bit because i Ooh. do know it's going to be okay am i so, going to be okay you're going to be okay i know because i see the changes that you're going through and i know a little bit about some of the the, the things and and why you're re you know, you're finding your superpower again. Mm -hmm. And um, I, another great thing is, is going to come out of everything that, uh, that life throws at you. And you're right, like the mental part of it, mm -hmm. um, as far as having a, a, a physical toll on your body. I, you know, if you, if you know, you know, I don't work out, you know, I'm not a gym person. Um, and I'm, I've kind of changed my way. This month, you know, I'm not drinking. November to remember. Did I tell you that? I Something saw you post that. I told Camille about yeah. this. I'm, yeah. My 30 day cleanse, November to remember. And I'm like, all right, let's see if this, because my body, I'm 48 now. My body hurts a lot for no reason. I just sleep and then I wake up and <laughs> something's hurting. It, I don't mean to laugh. Me. I don't so, mean to laugh, right. but it's, I, it's, it's, I get you. Take the alcohol out this month, start changing a few things, changing my, you know, the, the way that I, you know, think about things in my head. Just I'm, I'm just making a few little changes to help energize me and, and try to um, not feel so old all the time. It's hard. There's a, there's a huge physical toll that's been taken on my body. I can be as positive as I can be, but I'm still hunched over like an old lady with my back sometimes. So... Trying to make those uh, those changes, Chinzo. I'll meet you out for a drink, but no, no, I don't want. Right we could still meet. We don't have to be debauchery. But I'm very proud of you and envy the fact that uh, I don't want to blow who who it is. But there's someone here locally who I love very much that went on a 30 day. He did sober October, and I'm mad proud of him. And I think what's cool about it is that um, this is what I'm learning. You know, we've heard these cliche statements and we've read them and we've been told them since we were kids. But like, where your treasure is, your heart will be, right? So I've noticed that since since less, you know, net 90 days, 60 days ish, give or take, um, where there was a large treasure in my life and not that it was a bad treasure, but that treasure has now been removed from my life. And I have a lot of time and that time that used to be dedicated to that particular situation. Now I have an option now, like, what am I going to do with all this time? Do I, you know, do I sit back and do nothing or do I actually get busy and stay and try to learn and, and to reinvent in another area. So that's what I've been doing. It's been very reassuring and I'm not always perfect at it. I feel there's days where like today I haven't been outside either. That's why I chuckled with you. I haven't been out. I've been outside to get the piece of the adapter that I needed for the show today, but I haven't been like outside. But my point. Oh good. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> yeah. I, thought, I, I thought I should feel bad for not. Chrissy, look at me. I'm I'm drinking coffee. It's twelve forty. So trust me, you're doing I'm great. I'm drinking coffee at twelve forty. Oh, see, we have a very similar. Also, yep. There you go. Actually, I told you I'm having a lazy day with 
my kids, and I am I don't. I'm not complaining about that. No. I don't want that one that one just left. Like I love I love that. I those are important days. Practice. Those are healthy. I'd, I'd get up to get more coffee, but I don't have pants on, so I can't get up. So, um, <laughs> but like, actually, I had a Zoom call this morning, and I didn't, I didn't have a shirt on, so I didn't have my video on. And there's People don't like when you don't have a video on in Zoom, and there's no offense. I get it. I think it's like that people want to see. So I, had, I put the shirt on, then bada bing, we did the show. But anyways. Um, That's funny. Listen, we are at 40 minutes, and I don't want to steal you. I want you to be have, have a nice, lazy day with your children's, um, and we don't have to be debauchery. I would like to see you sooner than later. You know, I'm sure it will happen. We don't even make – you and I never make plans when we just see each other, so I'm sure I'll see you sooner than later. Um, is there anything that you want to actually plug or anything since we do – since, you you know, we are live and people – is there? do you have something on the horizon? You said, well, the Tennessee things, but, like, is there anything that you want to – I've got I've got Tennessee, and then um, you know, like I said, breakaways is is usually uh, the last Wednesday of every month. But this month, that's the night before Thanksgiving, so we're going to do it on Tuesday. And um, then I have, you know, hammock wine and cheese on December first, which will be the first day I can drink again if I so choose. Um, that's on a Tuesday as well. And then right now, I am on the fence about doing a show on. Uh, Wednesday night before Thanksgiving at 31 Supper Club in Ormond. I've, I've never done a holiday show before. I've never done a show the night before Thanksgiving. I know a lot of people get out, but I'm not sure if they're going to be getting out with families to go watch a comedy show. I don't know. It's still one of those things I just try to I, I figure out. It's like trial and error. I, I don't have a lot of guidance. I've got some help, but it's just one of those things i got to figure out. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a show that night. Or not, and then I have I'm in a, my comedy writing class. I've uh, I've written a few new jokes, which I'm super excited about, and um, that's like the first week of December at the Improv in Orlando. Okay, so I'll be doing a little a little set there and trying to work on my new material. So that's it. And then January I'll be at Jackie Knight's Comedy Club, actually doing a feature set. So I get to actually get up there and do a good solid 25 minutes finally instead of you know posting and right. everything else i'm doing well that's exciting and you know um i'm your biggest i don't know how you describe me but when you describe me to people i love it i wish i should write it down next time but basically i'm like your biggest non-existent non-existent fan i don't know what you say but it's cute no you're you're my um you're my biggest supporter that doesn't come to the show you would be like the um the the tailgater yeah, at the, uh, yes. at the club before the show, and you'll have everything ready before the show for everybody to go in, laugh, and have a good time, and you'll be there afterwards. Do you know but you I... you don't like you know, certain people? They don't want to see me on stage, and I don't know if that's just not your thing. Like one of my friends told me, she said, "I will never." She said, "I don't care if you one day get to where you sell out a whole theater." She said, "I can't do it." She said, "Like she gets nervous for me." Oh, she she's like. I said, well, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Like, I'm getting laughs. Like, I'm, this was years ago. She said, I'll just never be able to do it. She said, I can't even watch stand up on TV because I'm, I'm afraid. She's so fierce of them bombing. <laughs> I'm like, girl, it's just, um, that's just how who she is. But you are my biggest supporter. You are my biggest fan. You, you build me up, which you do for so many people. And I wish, I wish that, um, that I had the words to describe how you not only make me feel, but other people feel in um, pointing out their best qualities and, um, and just making them feel good about themselves. If I'm ever having a bad day or anybody that knows Tinzo, if you're ever having a bad day, you make one quick phone call and within five minutes, I feel like I can walk outside and, and conquer the world after talking to you. So that, uh, that means so very much to me and uh, a lot of other people. So I well, love you for it. I love you and I thank you for the love. And I, you, you, you do it for me. That's what the beautiful thing about it is. When I call you, we could be talking about snails. And it's not only funny, but it's optimistic and it's uplifting. And it's not – you're not taxing. You know, you, someone taught me this about being relational or transactional. And you're a very relational type of person. You're very – I don't know. So trust me, I appreciate the kind words. But woman, you do the same for me. Hence, I love talking with you. You make me 
feel good. You make me realize that there is, it, it's going to be okay. And, but you don't even say that. That's the beautiful part about it. You don't read some cliche statements from like your reader's digest today about how to put your shoes on. You just do it. And you, and I, I just want you to know that the feeling is absolutely mutual. And I admire you because you have, like I said, the, the, the way that you're able to do it, I know that it goes without saying having three offspring that need you and need not only for you to feed them, but love them. And then you also have to do it for yourself. I only need to do it for myself. And, you know, Camille is pretty self-sufficient, so I can't take too much credit except for the fact that we're here. So I can't, you able to persevere in doing it is even more admirable. And that's why I love you. And I learn from you. And that's why I love my Christy B. So, yeah, um, I love my Kindle. Look at your dogs back there. That's going to be me tomorrow. Can you see I Camille's? I, I, yeah. <laughs> so one's, one's cut yeah. off. People will be like, there's one missing. So that that's Chewy. This one is Chewy. And then that one's, I don't know, it's backwards. This way. Oh, whatever. The other one's Chance. And yes, I put them in here. I took a big gamble because if somebody would have came to the door, they would have had a, they would have been a shit show of barking. And I don't think you can mute while you're like in the middle of being live. So it would have been, so I, I took a gamble. Yeah, I had to lock Jax out to talk to you because, you know, Jax, he, he talks. Like he just, I, he yes, talks. I have he seen him. Better. He's talked to me. Yeah, he will. He's, he's, uh, he's something else. So I had to lock him out of my, out of my room. Now we've got a cat and I'm not a cat person, but the dog chases the cat and then the cat chases the dog and then, and then I think my daughter's going to get a uh, bearded dragon this week. So slowly but surely, uh, we're, we're, we're turning into a zoo. You got a petting zoo over there. Yeah, it's, well, I... it's going to be it's gonna be something. So, <laughs> um, But I love it, you know. We right. had a snake once. It's just, I'm that mom where I'm like, sure, let's do it, whatever. Let's, uh, right. let's get there. We'll go, we'll go through it, get the pets, bring them in. Somebody get a bunny. Let's get a turtle. Let's get some fish. What else can we can we do we've had a guinea pig oh it's just you know yeah, what though you're that as, as a mom you're the cool mom you're the cool mom i i think so i try to be but i still have to be you know i still have to be mom so yes um i hope that they can come to me when they have when they have things and that i i think i i keep my cool i think i i don't get all uh worked up about stuff so we can sit and talk about it so i think so i'm the i try to be well, they got cool kids, you know. They are. They're really cool. They're cool like I their like mom. Them. I'm gonna keep them. Listen, do me a favor and have a good, cozy day and watch like a fun. Camille and I just, <laughs> I don't know if we did a good thing or a bad thing, but we just re resurrected the Twilight. Se if you call it a series or a, whatever you call it, a trilogy or whatever the hell it's called. But holy bananas are those horrible movies. But we watched them. Um, I we were, we've been trying to watch movies that have more than one just to give us something to watch that's like mindless. Um, yeah. And we, the, the Twilight thing, oh my God! If you've never seen it and you want to just like numb your brain, that's a good one. Um, it's yeah, I, I, my kids, I, we love that stuff. I, I did. Well, enjoy I it. Re that. Resurrect I watch it again. Like I have a bad memory. It'd be like the first time watching it all over again. <laughs> well, it's funny. We watched the last one yesterday, which is I think there's a total of four. We watched the last one yesterday, and Camille goes, "I don't think I ever saw this one." I go, "Yeah," because we probably got the memo. This one it was bad. It was so bad. Well, it was like, I oh, it was like. I remember it. I don't know. Maybe don't, I haven't seen the last one. I don't think a lot of people it did. It was. It was literally like watching a like a Days of Our Lives with like your grandma from like 1991. Like it was bad. It was go, like, what well, are we watching? But you want to hear bad? I've already started watching Christmas romance. Yes. Uh, love stories. They're terrible, but I just can't stop. I don't know. I, I've already started. I've watched these cheesy movies and their christmas and every oh it's just i don't know what's wrong with me i do it i busted time. it out we we um we have little traditions that camille and i had started which i'm sure everyone does whether it's you know watching charlie brown's thanksgiving and this we we're just starting to you know what i like trying to break into the early start parts of any season watch movies that were made around that season so they're not like specific in the like oh here's a halloween movie but you watch a movie that was like it's near around the halloween time a perfect example of that is i think it's die hard with the homeboy that's saving is it the one where the, he goes in the building and it's christmas time 
blah blah blah. Oh yeah, that's oh, what's that every year? Bruce yeah, yeah, Willis. they're Bruce Willis. So that's my point. Like, it's not a Christmas movie, but there's Christmas genre. It's the Christmas feel. It starts breaking the ice. Yeah. But I think yeah. everyone's on the same page this year. I think everybody's like breaking out Christmas a lot earlier because we need the fun distraction. We need the we. Yeah, my daughter started decorating today. Yeah, I was like, what is that sound? And she's like. I'm decorating the banister, and I was like, oh, "Perfect, let's let's get it let's done." Let's do it. I we think got lights up already in the in the um on the stairwell, so I love it. Camille so may I watched this one Christmas movie what? on Netflix called Holiday, and I thought it was good Netflix. I do, but it sounds horrible. I love it. It's 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 cheesy, and you already know what's going to happen. Right. But I was like, this sounds like a great idea because these these two people, are, you know, this. Not a couple, but a, a girl and a guy um, start realizing that they go going on these horrible dates for the holidays, which I don't go out and like, date on the holidays. I don't have a holiday date, but they do. So then they get together just as friends to do, to go out every holiday. So then you'll see them out, you know, like Valentine's and you see, throughout the whole year. And of course, you know, they fall in love and blah, blah, blah. But it, I was like, maybe that's what I need. Just like a holiday. A holiday. You know, because everybody, you know, like like right now, time in life is for single people, this is, right. you know, this is where you, you might settle for a little bit less, but you're not alone during the holidays. That's right. where you got to be careful um, as a single person right. that you're not like, oh, well, you know, this will do for now. Right. And you settle a little bit. I found that uh, recently just a... a like a, a couple weeks ago, I met someone I thought I had a connection with, and then we messaged, and then he just, and then it just cut off. And um, he messaged me back a couple of days later. He's like, he said, um, "Oh my God, I forget that we're live here, and I just, I, I forget, and I feel like I'm just talking to you, and I'm just remembering." But anyway, I'm going to tell you the story because I don't, I don't care. So he messaged me a couple of days later, and he was like. Hey, sorry. He said, I was waiting. I know you were waiting for me to text you, and I was waiting for you to text me. Hope hope you had a great day or something like that. Right. And it just ran all over me. And I literally, listen, let me tell you what, Chico. I have no game whatsoever because I can say it like when it comes to that, like I, I don't I don't hold that. I messaged him back. You know, it, it wasn't a, a paragraph. It was probably two. And guys don't like that. You know, I know that, but I didn't care. I was like, oh, God, it's pathetic. I was like, I don't play games. If you want to text me, text me. I'm not going to pursue you. I don't care. You know, and I just went on and I said, oh, by the way, it's really nice to meet you. So stupid. Like the worst thing ever. Didn't hear from him again for a couple of days. And I was like, come to find out. I don't know where I got off on the story. Come to find out. He's kind of a bad guy, kind of a bad boy. Not somebody I need to get involved with anyway, but how did I get on that? Because we were talking about the holiday. You were talking um, about maybe just this. You, by the way, I already told you I'm down to chat. Just letting you know, you gave me the rule. You said you don't want to be more than 30 minutes. We're at an hour, and I'm loving it because now you're tapping into. Yeah. I, got personal. I forget that. I forget that we're well. Alive, but this is what really. This is what really happened. This is a new thing. Is this uh, one point? Is this 1.0 or 2.0? What new crush? This is another one. So okay, so two point. This, this, this was a this was this was a kind of a reset thing. Mm. Um, but it was again very quickly found out that this is not someone that I I need to like start hanging out with. But there was a, there was a moment where you know we we talked for several hours. It was a good connection, and and then it was just like like I was just blown off. No big deal, but I was like, wow, I, my message back was ridiculous. When I read it back and I let one of my girlfriends read it, and she was like, yeah, um, I probably would have just said, hey, good to hear from you. And I was like, yeah, but do you see my point? Like, I don't care. Like, I, I threw it all out there, basically. I don't play games if you want to text me, text me. Don't, don't. I'm not sitting around waiting on you. It was just disgusting. And so I do know how to get the guy not to message me again. <laughs> Clearly, how to lose a guy in 10 days? Right. Got that. Covered. Yeah. Chrissy's like, got it down in 10 paragraph. minutes. That's all you got to do. Write him a paragraph, maybe two, if you really don't want to hear from them again. Just send them a really long one, you know, about all your feelings and stuff. I didn't do that, but, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So, 
I watched that movie Holiday, and I was like, well, maybe that's what I need because I got I got no game. I I'm not really interested in anyone, so I really don't care. Right. So I'm making all the mistakes, and that's okay. It's kind of funny. I I'm gonna th- make that into a thing I uh, yeah, write that down. I see. I've been preaching a complete different doctrine than I used to preach when I was younger. It used to be. The whole calculated neglect and like, you know, don't show your cards and, and, you know, make them want you more than you want them. Like that oh was, God, listen, I, I know, but look, late, lately, and you know, I'm super blessed. I talk with a lot, a lot of people. I'm like, oh, listen, I'm all about just letting it out now. And not that I, I've been out of the dating game for 10 ish years. So I don't even know if my, if my doctrine would, would, would carry water, but I will say, I'm all those that confide in me and talk to me about their relationships, good or bad. And if someone, I don't really have much advice to give, but I would say, why don't you try being so vulnerable? I think vulnerability is like what we're all looking for. I think there's been not only a change in marketing and digital where people don't want to see the flashy, cool, hip stuff anymore. People want to see the little bit of the I'm not feeling good, looking good look, maybe I'm a little, you know, I got a booger in my nose and I'm okay with it. Point is, people are becoming more and more keen to the real, the real, it's like, look at the Hunger Games, right? We, Camille and I have been joking around because we watched that too. Look at the Hunger Games and how pretty everybody was and how fake and everybody was and how it was, a, and it like, it, it, it just went nowhere. It corrupted from the inside out. So what I preach now is just be real, be so real. And Christy, you know, I go, you know, we've talked about this a lot. I say, just let it out. Just let it out. Be, be well, like, be open. And if it's not reciprocated, that's okay. I think people need to be more of accepting of, and I'm not talking to you, I'm talking about those that are in the dating realm. Once again, no advice because I've been out for 10 years. When I was in dating, Nokia phones were still, still around. My way of life though, is now the, the relationships that I cultivate, like look at right now. I've been able to court you as a friend and to find a way of, to being able to connect where there's love, validity, consistency, because my motive is pure. And if you don't like the fact that I don't, I'm not this or I'm not that or I'm not this, that's okay. I think people need to be okay with the fact that not everyone's going to like you. And I dealt with a lot of that, right? Who doesn't, who, who wants to be told they're not liked inadvertently or on purpose? Like it sucks, but it's okay. You're not, look. I'm not everyone's flavor, and I know that. I, I may want to think that I am and want to think that I'm cool and everybody wants to be like me, but no, I'm not. If anything, we probably, just like with you, right, there's a lot of people that probably don't like us or don't like the way we look, feel, talk, etc. But I love you for that, and don't please, don't change, don't ever. I love the paragraphs, text. I love that well, stuff. you know what? It's, I, I, am, I am just being who, who I am. Here's the thing, like when a guy doesn't, message back or whatever it's i'm like now you have to look at it in a different way okay so either clearly he's just not that into you he doesn't you know that's that or okay so he's coming up with this game plan like he wants to but he doesn't right like he, he wants to and he wants to ask you but then he doesn't want it to be too serious i'm like i, I have no secrets i say it how it is how i feel and that is pretty much that it's it's not for it's not for everyone, but like the guy I just sent that you know paragraph to and stuff. First of all, I'm not that interested. No offense, but I'm not that interested, right. and I'm not that invested. I've right. got nothing to lose here. You know, it's just like it was a simple little connection there for a moment, and you know, it, it's not that big of a deal. So for you to come back and be like, oh, I was waiting on you to text. You were waiting on me to say, I don't have time for that. That right. is. That is stupid. You're a forty-something-year-old grown man. Message or don't. Like, don't. I just. I don't know. It's just weird. It's not easy out there, but it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not impossible. It's not. Um, it's not boring. That's for sure. It's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. But it is. My my girlfriends are like. I remember the last guy years ago. I was getting involved in a relationship, and I actually was working for Nick at, at Fuego at the time, and this guy was texting back and forth and um i it wasn't even me i was seriously working with two bartenders that were in their mid-20s and i would 
like when we were in the middle of messaging, I would hand them the phone and they would message this guy. The whole time that we started dating, me getting this guy to, to, to start dating me, it wasn't even me. I didn't even know how to respond. This was like my first time trying to correspond with a guy through texting. And it wasn't me. I was letting these kids do it because they were used to it. Now I do all the wrong things. And uh, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's just that's, that's how it is. My whole crazy uh, dating life is um, it's, an, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting story, to say the least. Or lack thereof. Oh, look, one of your puppies is getting up there, getting bored with my, look at that. I put them right to sleep. <laughs> and he's out again. It's like, you think your dating life is bad? Look at me. I've only got a brother. Sometimes I think about that. I tell Camille, I go, these guys, man, they don't, they, they'll never know. They'll never know. Which I don't, yeah, I don't. I would rather, I would rather somebody do, I'd rather a guy text me a paragraph. Yes. And be like, this is how I feel. This is what I think. And then I would be like, oh, that's really cool. You know, and I would come back and be like, I'm not, you know, usually I say, oh, I'm not really dating right now. Or I'm very busy. I never say, I, maybe I should. That's the one thing I'm not brutally honest about. I never just come out and say, I'm not at all interested. Right. You know, I just, I say something else. I, I, I think that that's better. But still, I get my point across. You know, but yeah, I'd rather get the paragraphs and the little one-liners and stuff. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm, I agree. But anyway, how did we get off on that? I don't know. That's how the show, that's what you do. That's, that's, that because... that's what we do, girl. You know that. You, you said it was going to be 30 minutes, see? I know. And I know we've never had just a 30-minute conversation. No. Um, but listen, I think I'll say this in closing when it comes to not only dating, but what I find to be relationships that are very fruitful and helpful to me. And I, they, they give as much as I take and vice versa. Those are the most helpful ones is I think, you know, once again, I like to talk in like using always an analogy or a metaphor to some capacity. And I would say this, if more people knew what aisle they belonged in, in the grocery store. So that way, once they were picked up and got brought home, they, the person that picked them up would know where they fall in their life. I think it would probably help and be more conducive to their happiness is by knowing that, hey, this man or woman picked me up in a healthy food aisle, so now they're going to put me in the healthy food section of their life. I think that that's probably what I'm feeling in my gut would maybe be helpful. And that pertains to all things of life. If you're getting picked up, and if, if you're getting picked up in the dessert section, that's great. There's a time and place for that too, but it's going to be very hard to be eaten by for breakfast when you're dessert. And there are days that you do that too, but not as frequently as it is where – just know that where you're getting picked up is probably where you're going to fall in that person's life. Is this making sense? Well, yeah, well, true. And he should and he should know that, too, because he's probably going to find me uh, picking up tampons. There's three girls living in this house. So that is pretty much like prepare yourself, dude. Like, that's where, that's where I'm going to be picked up. You know what I tell – um, I, I have dudes and gals that sometimes that are, like, super, super desperate that are, like – there are no, there's no one in the world for me kind of thing. And that's not too common, but there are those out there. You know what I say? If I literally had to make pretend that I was in the dating world and I had to find somebody, I would frequent places of health, not the bars, not the cliche churches, none of that. I would be at a, not the gyms either. I'm not talking about gyms. I'm talking about more niche. Go to a tennis recreational area. Go to a go to like an indoor soccer field or an outdoor soccer field. Start being surrounded by people that are taking care of themselves, and by consequence of that, you may find a good breed of not only a friend but somebody that you can implement within your own life. And if there's a wee bit of sexy on there, whether vanity and or in per, inside, there you have somebody of greatness. And I am not denouncing or lo lessening the integrity of great acquisition of friendships that do start at friendly bar banters or churches and grocery stores. That's great. I mean, I actually met my Camille at a gym as cliche as that is. So I'm not saying that, but if you really are like zilched and you've exhausted every Avenue, go to a, go to, go to somewhere where people are taking care of themselves. And I can guarantee you at least once again, you'll find something or someone there that's What's better than it's somebody trying to take care of themselves? So that's anyways, that's just my prerogative. But I don't know how we, well, we, you know why we get off in these tangents? Because this is how we would talk whether we were on the show or not. You follow? I know. So. You know what? The only thing I can hope for is that when I do 
fall in love again, and, and I will, and I, I, I look forward to it. But when I do fall in love again, I hope that you love him too. I hope that my friends, I hope that he's, I hope that he's that guy that, you know, is, is so good to me and my family, that my kids love him and my friends love him, and he is that. And that's why I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to settle for less. It's, he's got to be that person. Like there's a few people in my life that, that he, he they, they've got to love him or, you know, or that's that. So well, I'll tell you right off the I, bat. I, I hope that when, when I'm like, hey, I'm introducing you to someone, it's important. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I don't want any pressure. I want you to just love him anyway. And then I'll be like, I, I love him too. So, if you love him, I will love him. You know that. So I don't worry about and that. And you and Camille are like, um, and I don't mean to do this about, about your marriage and stuff, but you have such a strong, healthy, loving relationship. Um, a, a beautiful marriage, and I love you two both so dearly. It's like, man, I kind of look forward to um, like having a partner that you like and she likes, and then we can have like double dates and stuff. Like, I don't, I haven't had that in a long time. And even when I was in, um, when I was married, you know, my my husband and I at the time, we didn't have really other uh, healthy couple marriage. Right. You know, we didn't have other couples to that were in a healthy marriage to you know that's important i right. think to have another couple to be with so that'll be that'll be a deal breaker for for this guy you know he's got a i'll tell you the real deal breaker well i appreciate the compliment but i would say camille's actually the real dip test like if she if if someone put it this way i've never once met anyone that doesn't like camille and that would be the tall tales like if camille that's that's really it. I'm I'm easily not liked, and I'm 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 I easily can find flaws in people because that's what I do, or that's just what humans do. I Camille doesn't have that character flaw. Camille is like the I joke around about Camille walking out of the Old Testament of the Bible. Like she is everything that I would if I could if I could like manufacture her demeanor and manufacture her who she is let alone the vanity aspect of her being dropped at gorgeous, but like her, who the characteristics right. I literally would be, well, I'm already the w richest man in the world. Do you already know that? But I would say if I would be like, I would be able to become like Jeff Bezos rich, like that kind of thing. You know, like I would, I would have the Amazon of Camille's come get one. It's prime. She, we send them to you two days and you get one dog. Oh, you can see the other dog's head now. Look, <laughs> Well, you definitely are a blessed man uh, with a beautiful family and a, a great life. I'm, I'm glad to have you as a part of my inner circle. Um, you and Camille both mean a great deal to me, and I love you. Love you. Love you so much. And what a great way to start my week. Because as much as I want to be lazy, I do have work to do today. Mm -hmm. I gotta get. I gotta get busy. Get motivated. And you once again help me. Well, if you get. Uh, Get there. Well, thank you. You've motivated me. As soon as we hang up, I'm gonna be putting my DMX back on. If you want some of that old fat, that's my that's my album for the day. Is the DMX uh, flesh? I forget the exact album name again. It's <laughs> flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. My parents hated this album. They hated all my albums, but this one I couldn't even play in the <laughs> house. I was in sixth grade. I'll never forget. And I would put my headphone on CD player holding it because it didn't fit in a pocket and i would go to the bus in the dark and i hated school but dmx got me through it so if you need a little uplifting today and you want to get your gangster on little dmx will help you but i love you dearly too christy and i can't tell you enough how i love how willing you are to just play games with me as we did today we had a nice fun game and we let people see and talk with us so um i will talk to you soon and i love you right, and um everybody to go follow christy b comedy all over the place and buy tickets to my shows because these comedians work so so very hard yes. so much great talent coming in um and laughter truly is the best medicine mm, so that's... i'm, I'm kind of like writing a prescription of laughter for everyone i love and it selling it for twenty dollars a pop you like a little patch adams $20 a ticket. love it um, all right. I love, you. We'll, I love you too. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. All right, bye.